William Afton is probably one of the most despicable villains to have ever existed in all of video game history. Especially because despite the fact that we know he is committed to dastardly plots, we don't actually know why. Welcome back my fellow gamers, it's me Amanda. Today we're counting down the top 10 scary reasons William Afton deserves to suffer. And trust me, he does deserve to suffer. What do you think is the worst thing Afton has ever done? Number 10, Sociopathic. The fact that we have never seen William display a shred of remorse for any of his actions is a strong motivation for wanting him to suffer or believing that suffering is what he deserves the most. When confronted by the ghosts of his victims, he literally laughs at them. When his daughter is seemingly just been lost to him forever as the result of his own actions even, he seems to be calm, cool, and collected somehow, as though he isn't bothered at all by this. I mean, I know everyone grieves differently, but it definitely seems, based on everything else that we know of William, that he simply isn't grieving at all here. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, why not show us you love us by clicking that subscribe button? That way you won't miss any FNAF content. Goodness knows, there will be more once this movie gets underway and once we get, finally, the Runes DLC. Come on DLC, where are you at? Number 9, Creating Vanny. What terrifies me the most? The idea of not having control over your own body, mind, or your actions. The idea of possession. In essence, this is what William Afton manages to do to Vanessa, or Vanny. I'm still not really fully certain if they're the same person, although I am like 98% sure they are, just based off of everything we saw in Security Breach, but I digress. With Vanny, William as Glitchtrap seems to have found a way to literally control and influence minds. Seemingly, with Vanessa being her own personality and Vanny being kind of like the evil side of her that was created by Glitchtrap's influence on her mind. In fact, it seems that William Afton is the one controlling Vanny and making her do his bidding while her other half, Vanessa, seemingly has no idea about this other life she herself is living. I'm also not sure if this is straight up mind control, but it kind of does seem to be so. Number 8, because nothing else has worked. I think another reason that William really deserves to be punished is because this has actually failed to work. Every time people have tried to punish him, like he just always comes back. So anytime we finally feel, oh, this is it, this is the end, he's finally getting his dues, he's being punished, he's never coming back, he always finds a way somehow to do just that, to come back again. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought we dealt with you. Not yet, I guess. Although I guess he was also forced to live for a while as a punishment, but really that doesn't seem like a very good way to punish someone who seems to enjoy using their time on this earth to hurt other people. It just seems like a good way to allow William to basically prey on more victims. Goodness. I don't think that was fully thought through, really. <laughs> Number 7, hasn't explained himself. I think one of the greatest reasons why William deserves to suffer is because he still has not explained himself or his actions. How wild is that? I mean, it's been how many years in terms of how long we've known of William Afton? It has been over five years and he still hasn't really explained himself. What kind of villain is he? So many villains are like fans of monologuing, but I guess not like William Afton. He hasn't even really hinted at why he's become a killer or what purpose it serves. Everything we know for the most part has not come from the development of his character at all, but from other areas and elements of the franchise. Knowledge we then attempt to apply to Afton to make his motivations make sense. It's like we're just picking up these little clues along the way and then being like, could this apply? Is this why William Afton is how he is? I don't know. Could be, but also we could be wrong. Number six, one suit. He only seems to have one suit, other than him wearing the Spring Bonnie suit, which I would not count. I mean, what is that about? I mean, really, it's a crime against fashion. So now not only is he taking lives, but he's also offending our eyes by only ever wearing one, one purple suit. Why has this man only one set of clothes? I personally like my villains to have a bit more flair. And so for this reason, I would say he really deserves to suffer for not mixing it up and proving that he can be just as suave as we'd assume he'd be, as we've been led to assume he is. I mean, I just think he would be suave because he somehow convinced Harry to partner with him and managed to open up a restaurant successfully. And it's been implied that William was the more charismatic of the two. So you'd think, you know, he'd show that through his sense of style. I hope in the movie he has a whole closet of purple suits, but that they're all different so that we can redeem him from being not just a law-breaking criminal, but also a fashion criminal as well. 
I mean, I'm fine with you wearing a different purple suit every day. I just want it to be different, you know? Just wanted to have a little, little bit of pizzazz. Number five, the cavities. I mean, the fact that all of his attacks seem to have been premeditated based on evidence we have uncovered through the games seems like a pretty good reason to want William to suffer. A very interesting discovery came to us via the blueprints for the animatronics that we received during the video game Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. In these blueprints, it appears that some animatronics have chest cavities, with one even being shown to have been filled in with the drawing of a small person that is stuffed inside there. This seems to imply that William created these animatronics with the main secret purpose of using them to abduct and store his victims, using the animatronics as aids in kidnapping and killing, which is pretty despicable. Number four, Charlie's fate. To many, William appears to be the mastermind behind the death of Henry Emily's daughter, Charlie. And for this, there are many that feel he deserves to be punished, which to be honest is pretty fair. We don't know why William did this, but it seems to have been pretty intentional and possibly was done either maliciously to hurt Henry for some reason, or even worse, to use Charlie in one of his twisted experiments in regards to achieving immortality, which it also seems plausible that William William Afton could be obsessed with. Although, once again, this is us kind of figuring that out, but we don't really have it confirmed. William's never said it, but yes. Many believe, though, that that is his true goal. And at this point, I am one of those people. Charlie also died all alone, which makes her death even more sad and more terrible. And for that, I truly do believe that William deserves to be punished. Number three, countless victims. When it comes to William Afton, there are the victims that we know about, but there could always be more than that. Based on William's animatronic creations, it seems as though he was doing his best to make sure he had an endless supply of victims for him to use, possibly in experiments. Either capturing and harvesting remnants as part of his experiments to make himself immortal, or simply killing for fun, or a combination of both of those things. Already his list of victims feels long, and what's worse is we don't even know if this list is complete. There could be even more victims we just simply do not know about. I'm half expecting to later find out that he has a den filled with bones similar to Pennywise's lair in Stephen King's It. I mean, who knows? There could be countless victims here. Number two, Elizabeth's fate. One of the worst things that William has ever done, in my opinion, is possibly intentionally harming his own daughter. I mean, granted, this might not have been intentional, but based on what we know of William, the idea that what happened to Elizabeth was some kind of freak accident eh, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And if somehow her death was the result of an accident, then at the very least, we have to consider what happened to her a terrible indicator of complete gross negligence on William's part, which yeah, either he did this intentionally and he's a super evil person or he's like a really bad parent. I mean, William basically left her unsupervised around a robot it seemed he knew was programmed to kill. So what is that about? It seems more likely that William actually planned for this to happen in order to use his daughter's soul as fuel for another of his experiments. And sure, maybe he was, you know, just trying to make her immortal like he wants to be, but there is no indication that she knew this and so she could never have really signed off on participating if she didn't know. Like. There's no consent there that could be given because she didn't know about this if that was the intent and I don't think it was. However, it seems that when his experiment resulted in creating the vengeful, manipulative, and violent being that is Circus Baby, William simply decided to terminate this project, which is probably why he sent Michael in. Number one, Machiavellian Machinations. I like the title for this point. It is supremely fun to say, Machiavellian Machinations. Try saying that five times fast. Basically what this means is William Afton is a mastermind, a puppet master. He's just a person with a bunch of plans and all of them are really no good. To be Machiavellian is to use emotional manipulation to gain something, either to achieve a greater goal or simply for your own personal gain. And machinations simply means basically to scheme. William is a master in both regards. He loves to scheme and he definitely is happy to manipulate others in the process of doing so, to ensure his scheme's success. I mean, granted we still don't really fully know what his goals are or what his main goal is, but we know that he definitely has something. I mean, I would hope. Could you imagine? He's like, why did I do it all? No reason. <laughs> That would be so ridiculous. And we know that he doesn't seem to mind putting others in harm's way, even his own offspring, in order to ensure he achieves said 
mystery goal, whatever it is. That's all the time we have for this video. I hope you enjoyed exploring just some of the worst things about Afton. Personally, for me, the mind control is probably one of the most despicable things he has done both in the video game universe and in the book universe. I'll see you next time, but until then, keep on gaming on. Pew pew! Thank you.